Redwood, Conservative MP and uh, supporter of Brexit. Thank you very much for joining us this morning, Sir John. Uh, do you think it is conceivable that the Prime Minister will yet be able to get meaningful vote three back before the Commons? Well, I think the Speaker made the right decision and he united Remain and Leave MPs because we on both sides are very critical of this agreement and have helped vote it down with massive majorities on the two previous occasions it went through. But as the Speaker's judgment made clear, if, if there is a material change in the proposition the government wants to put forward, then of course the government can put it forward. Or if the government can build a super majority for the whole proposition, then it could change standing orders of the House of Commons. But that seems uh, extremely unlikely, uh, given that this was last defeated by a massive margin of 149. So you don't agree with those who say that the Speaker is trying to frustrate Brexit, delay Brexit? No, I think it was an entirely neutral judgment because uh, uh, there are three options from here, aren't there? Um, leave uh, with the withdrawal agreement signed, which many of us don't think is leaving at all. Just leave under the law that Parliament has uh, passed and clearly set out. Uh, or abandon Brexit. Those are the three options and that's why both Remain and Leave were, were were quite enthusiastic yesterday because the third option, uh, the sign the withdrawal agreement and stay in on those terms, uh, is much more difficult now because it cannot be represented in that form. And, uh, you know, who among us would gaze into the crystal ball when it comes to this Brexit process? It has thrown up so many surprises. But do you envisage, therefore, that how the next 10 days will play out will be uh, Theresa May going to Brussels, asking for an extension? Of course, as the law stands, the UK is still due to leave the EU on the 29th of March. So if she asks for that extension, then there needs to be a vote to change that law in Parliament uh, to, to change the date. Well, yes, there may need to be more than one vote, depending on how complicated the legal changes would be, and that would depend on what kind of an agreement there was, if any, with the EU uh, over delay. And the government yesterday was singularly unable to answer the two, two most obvious questions about delay. One, how long do you want a delay for? And two, what would be the purpose of the delay? Now, the EU has always been crystal clear that it regards the negotiations as finished for the time being and that there would not be new negotiations unless we signed up to their surrender document, the so-called withdrawal agreement. And unless they're prepared to change that, there is absolutely no point in having a delay. I'm urging the Prime Minister not to delay, uh, to implement the law that we have already agreed and to table a comprehensive free trade agreement because I think that could unlock everything. So I think the EU would then say, well, if you're leaving anyway, we will sit down and discuss a free trade agreement. And then under world trade rules, we don't need to impose tariffs or barriers on each other, which would be a very good outcome. Would your constituents like to see a delay at the moment if it meant that the, the UK uh, avoids leaving without a deal because your constituency voted to remain, didn't it? Uh, no, we don't know that. Uh, I represent bits of West Berkshire as well as Wokingham, but there were clearly quite a lot of Remain voters in Wokingham. Uh, a lot of them have been urging me to vote against the withdrawal agreement because they share my view that this is a very bad agreement. And that's why I'm sketching out what I think would be the best future of all, which is to leave uh, with talks going on about a free trade agreement so we don't need to impose new tariffs and barriers. And I think, yes, a lot of my Remain voters would think that would be a very good outcome. The, the frustration is the government, two years, eight months into these discussions, still hasn't tabled a free trade agreement. You know, why not? Uh, so uh, let me get this straight. Are you saying, are you predicting that next week may be uh, considerably more complicated than Theresa May asking for the extension this week, bringing it back to the Commons and through uh, the means of a, a statutory instrument, in other words, a short debate, uh, and then getting that extension passed? Do you think it may be more complicated than that? Well, I don't think Parliament is going to accept a 90-minute debate on something that important. It would have to be a much longer debate. And, of course, in the House of Lords, they, they may wish to examine it uh, in some detail as well. Uh, but that's, we would that's want to know That's a failure of Parliament, then, isn't it? That's a failure of Parliament. You know, we've had almost three years and Parliament hasn't managed to come to an agreed position. No, but Parliament did come to a very clear agreed position. It, it said there would be a referendum. We held a referendum. It said it would observe the result of the referendum and it is legislated for the outcome of the referendum and I and my friends are just saying don't change it Parliament and we're now arguing about whether the Remain group in Parliament have the votes uh, and the the brass neck to say to the British people we still think you're completely wrong and we're now going to delay or stop Brexit by trying to change the law.
Okay, let's see how the next 10 days unfold. Uh, so John Redwood, thank you.